before we move on <clears throat> um, and talk about solving the classical wave equation further, um, it's really important that we start talking about complex numbers. So before we go on, I'm going to start talking to you about the first major math concept that we'll go through. Um, it turns out that if you think about it, there's three major classes of numbers. The first class is something we're all so used to seeing, and that's the real numbers. So the real numbers are anything that runs on the number line, like negative 3, negative 2, so forth, um, up until positive infinity. Pi, E, these are also real numbers, and we're used to seeing them. Um, now I'm going to introduce something different that we haven't seen, um, and it's the imaginary number. So we're taught in high school um, that basically you can take the square root of a negative number. Um, and it turns out that's true. You can take the square root of a negative number and get a real number as an answer. It, it doesn't make sense like that. So we have to introduce a new idea. And that idea is that if you take the square root of a negative number, you end up with something called an imaginary number. Okay, And the simplest imaginary number there is... Uh, it's negative, it's the square root of negative 1. So that's the simplest imaginary number you have out there. Now, if I combine a real number with an imaginary number, if I add them or if I subtract them, then I get something called a complex number. So a complex number is basically just a real number plus an imaginary number, like, for example, 5, which is a real number, plus square root of a negative 1, which is an imaginary number. So I call this the complex number, and I represent it by this weird-looking C. Okay? Now the question is, of course, what's an imaginary number? Um, it's kind of like the imaginary friend you had in your childhood. Uh, it helps you in hard times when you don't have friends, but it, the sad thing is it only exists in your mind. So imaginary numbers are kind of like that. We basically use them to help us out with physics um, and stuff like that, but they don't really exist, right? So it's just a tool that we invented to make our math easier. Um, imaginary numbers are not pointless. They have very important uses. Um, as this course progresses on, you'll see those um, uses soon enough. For now, just try to understand what an imaginary number is. Okay, there, it's really not that hard. Um, an imaginary number, by definition, is basically the square root of negative 1. So the square root of negative 1, I give it a special symbol, i to represent that it's an imaginary number. So whatever number this guy is, it's an imaginary number. So it turns out that I can have lots of imaginary numbers. I can have 1 times square root of negative 1. I can have 2 times square root of negative 1, 3 times square root of negative 1. In fact, I can also have, um, you know, square root of negative 1 times pi, which would turn out to be um, pi i, right? So, if i is equal to square root of negative 1, then it follows that if I square i, then I can get rid of this square root, and I'm left with negative 1. So the important point to keep in mind is that the square of an imaginary number always gives you a real number. So imaginary numbers on their own might not be helpful, but if you square them, then it's extremely useful for us, okay? So they're kind of like a secret code. You don't really get what you want unless you square it. Now let's talk about complex numbers. So we talked about real numbers, we talked about imaginary numbers, now we talk about complex numbers. Complex numbers are complex because they have a real and an imaginary part. So we can write any complex number um, z, I'll give it a special name, um, as x plus i y. So it turns out that the real part of z is x. It'll be a real number like 5, 6, 7, 2, 4, negative 1, and so on. And then you'll have some sort of imaginary part of z that's stuck with an i, 
um, and I'm gonna call that y. <laughs> so x is the real part of z and y here is the imaginary part of z. So let's do a tiny easy example. If z is 5 plus square root of negative 36, well how do I rewrite this um, in complex number a little bit simpler? Well, you can recall that square root of 36, um, in this part, I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to rewrite it as negative 1 times 36. So this 36 turns out to be 6. The square root of 36 is 6. And the square root of negative 1 is i. So this is where I get this 6i from. And I put a positive negative there because whenever you take the square root of a number, um, then you're left with a positive or a negative number. Um, and that just goes back, goes back to basic math. Uh, if you square any number, positive or negative, you always get a positive answer, right? So if you square root any number, it could have come from a positive number or a negative number. So that's why I put a positive negative there, okay? So let's not get lost in semantics right now. Um, but the important thing to recognize here is that this is a complex number in the form of 5 plus minus 6i. The real part of this number is 5 and the imaginary part of this number is 6 because it's associated with the i. Now here, we're more interested in finding out things like how do you add and subtract complex numbers, right? So let's go ahead and find this out. If I want to add this complex number with this complex number, then this is what I do. z1 plus z2 is 5 plus 3i plus 5 plus 9i. So think of, think of the real numbers as apples, um, and I really can't draw apples, but here's something that looks like an apple. Um, and think of the imaginary numbers like oranges. So you can add apples and apples, you can add oranges and oranges, but you can't add an apple and an orange. What's five apples plus three oranges? Mm, doesn't make sense, right? So I'm going to go ahead and I'm going to add the so-called apples or the real numbers. So 5 plus 5 is 10 and then I'm going to go ahead and add the oranges. So 3i plus 9i turns out to be 12i. So it's just simple addition that we've been seeing so um, so often. You kind of treat the i like some sort of variable um, and then you go ahead and you do the math. Treat i like x. Like, just treat it like any normal algebraic equation where i can be replaced with x and then do the math that you already know how to do. Now, the next question is, z1 is this number over here, z2 is this number over here, how do I subtract them? So the question asks, what's z2 minus z1? So the order is kind of sw um, switched around, but that, that doesn't really make a difference. So the question is asking us, what's 5 minus 10i? which is z2, minus 6 plus 2i, which is z1. So remember, the negative sign distributes inside, um, and therefore I'm left with 5 minus 10i, minus 6, minus 2i. And then I just do the simple algebraic math that I'm so used to doing. So I go ahead and I add and subtract the like terms. So 5 minus 6 turns out to be negative 1 and minus 10i minus 2i just turns out to be negative 12i right so this is the answer now another question is how do i multiply two complex numbers for this you have to keep in mind that i squared is equal to negative 1 we talked about this recently, right? If the square root um, of negative 1 is equal to i, then i squared is simply just equal to minus 1. Now, this is z1, this is z2, um, and we're asked what's z1 multiplied by z2, okay? So, 
5 minus i multiplied by 2 minus 3i. So again, it goes back to algebra. We know how to do this. We multiply the 5 with the 2 first, then we multiply the 5 with the negative 3, 1, 3i, I'm, I'm sorry. Then we go ahead and we multiply the negative i with the 2, and then we go ahead and we multiply the negative i with the negative 3i. So let's see what we get. 5 times 2 is 10. 5 times negative 3i is negative 15i. Minus i multiplied by 2 is simply minus 2i. And then minus i multiplied by minus 3i is this. So what's minus minus? It's positive. Okay? So then I'm going to be left with 3i squared. Positive 3i squared. So I'm going to go ahead and simplify this a little bit more. And I get 10 minus 17i. Now remember, what is i squared? It's equal to negative 1. So 3 multiplied by negative 1 is minus 3. And I'm left with um, 7 minus 17i as my answer.